Hey, what's up guys? It's your money cat. Today we're going to take a look at my long-term portfolio that I began a few months back and we're going to talk about what the purpose of this is for me, what my strategy is, and this will be made into a series because I plan on regularly adding money to this long-term account so you guys can follow along as this account continues to grow. In my other video, I talked about how anyone can retire with little over $2 million with just little planning. So this account was born from that idea with little bit of difference. For me, this is more of a safety net portfolio rather than targeting retirement. I plan to and I hope to retire earlier than when I'm 60, but if all else fails, knock on wood, then at 60, I'll at least have this portfolio so that I can retire. Secondly, instead of using a retirement specific account like Roth IRA, I'm using just a regular portfolio account from Merrill Edge. The reason is I have checking and savings account from Bank of America, so it makes it really easy to transfer money in and out of my checking account to my investment portfolio. This is important for me because I'm foregoing saving up for my emergency fund. Most people will tell you that you should save up like three months or six months worth of cost of living uh, to cover any emergency funds. However, because a transfer between my checking account and this portfolio is so easy and fast, I'm using this portfolio to double as my investment portfolio as a safety net and also any emergency fund that I need, I'm able to pull it out relatively quickly. So let's take a look at the current balance. I really began this plan around mid-August, September-ish, and before I had some money, I took it out. I don't remember what I used it for, but I just left $500 to uh, keep the account open. And really, this plan began right here. Initially, I entered uh, $10,000 to the account, with the plan of adding $1,000 every month. So I added installments of $1,000 in October. This is for November, and this was for December. Now in December, I added a little more extra money uh, because my income increased slightly, so I had a little bit extra cash. We'll come back to this transaction. I'll talk about it a little more later, but I basically added it because I just had a lot of extra cash this month but it wasn't my best buy. I almost felt like I was kind of pressured, forced into buying something when I didn't really have to. So all in all so far, I've deposited $17,000 uh, with $500 that was left over from previous endeavors. For this portfolio, I've made some concrete rules to go by because this will be a long-term portfolio. I'm aiming for about 28 years because by the end of it, I'll be 60 years old. So the first rule of this portfolio is invest with five-year outlook, meaning whenever I'm choosing a certain stock, I ask myself, where would this stock be in five years and would I still want to hold that stock after five years? I think in today's day and age, Looking out for 10 years is a little bit unrealistic because everything's moving so fast. So I think five years gives you a good long-term perspective while not just guessing so much out into the future. The second rule is for any stock that I buy in this portfolio, I'm planning to hold for at least one year and that's for tax reasons. If you hold any stock for over one year, then it's identified as a long-term investment. So the tax rate is capped at 15% instead of going based on your income bracket. So for any stock that I buy in this account, I will be holding it for at least one year to get that tax benefit. And the last rule is that I'll be rebalancing portfolio after one year if necessary. The one year being, again, for tax benefits, uh, if I rebalance my portfolio and I have to sell some shares before I've held for one year, then I'll be paying more tax than necessary. So any stock that I own after one year, then it's open to being rebalanced. So with those rules in mind, let's take a look at my portfolio. So currently I own three stocks, AMD, Amazon, and Tesla. So my initial purchase was Tesla. Again, with each of them, I asked myself, Am I willing to hold it 
after five years and where do I see these companies in five years? Tesla, I talked about it a lot in my other Tesla videos, so I won't go into detail. Electric vehicle is still at an infancy level in terms of taking over the market cap for automobiles. So in five years, I only see better things for Tesla as well as possibly other EV makers. My second purchase was AMD. And this was after they announced that they are acquiring uh, Xilinx. AMD obviously has done really, really well competing with Intel and going toe to toe. And I like the fact that they're not just staying where they are. They have much bigger dreams uh, as shown through acquiring Xilinx. Now, more recently, there's been news that companies like Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, they're starting to develop their own chips. So I actually don't like AMD as much as before, but I still think there's enough room in the market where AMD can continue to grow uh, even with those companies starting to make their own in-house chips. The last purchase I made was Amazon and this was from the most recent $3,500 deposit. In hindsight, I didn't like my decision-making process. Not that Amazon is a bad company, actually, I'm happy to have Amazon, especially for my long-term account. But at the time, there was really no reason to rush into buying Amazon. My thinking process back then was I had few other stocks that I was interested in, but I just didn't feel confident and comfortable enough uh, to predict where that stock or where that company would be in five years. But in my trading account, those stocks were doing really, really well. So I think I actually blended the two thinking processes and two portfolios together. And I felt like I really had to just make a purchase then, which is a mistake, especially for a long-term portfolio like this. So while Amazon's not a bad stock to own in this portfolio, I think I settled for this decision rather than I like Amazon and I'm going to buy Amazon. So this will be a continuing learning process for me to really try to separate my mindset between my trading accounts and my long-term accounts. Finally, this Excel sheet shows the grand plan for this portfolio. Uh, I'll be updating this throughout this 28-year period, and I'll be at least depositing $12,000 yearly, uh, $1,000 per month. My minimal goal is 10% annual gain, like I talked about in my other retirement video. So please check that out for more details. So all in all, at the end of the safety net account, which will be end of 2048, I'll be 60 years old, and I would have deposited in $353,000. And the account should be at at least 1.9 million and some change. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with this series as I'll be updating it every single week. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.